NASCAR has held a lot of races over the course of its 70-year run. In just the Cup Series alone, over 170 tracks will have played host to 2,606 races by season's end this year. And of these 170 or so tracks, pretty much all of them have a well-documented history. A sizable plurality of them were simple dirt tracks built around state and county fairgrounds, and while most of those have closed down and withered away over the decades, a few of them still persist in one form or another. Columbia Speedway in Columbia, South Carolina is a popular spot for festivals, car shows, and swap meets. North Carolina State Fairgrounds in Raleigh, the site of the Cup Series' last dirt race, still has its grandstands up as the organizers now use them for concerts at the fair. Most tracks were meticulously documented by multiple people over the course of decades. A good number of them still have at least some portion of the original facility still standing and you really don't have to do too much digging to find a picture or two of the tracks themselves. But one curious track bucks this trend. Right up at the top of the list of tracks for NASCAR on RacingReference.info is Air Base Speedway in Greenville, South Carolina, my hometown. But here's the thing, not I or anyone else I know in the area ever even knew this track existed. No one ever talked about it. And as I began to dig deeper and deeper into Racing References data, I began to even question whether or not it ever existed in the first place. It's rare to run across an honest-to-god ghost track, but here we have a true case of a track so obscure that even what little basic info we have on Racing Reference is called into question. First off, the track only ever held one race, and that was in 1951. Bob Flock won the race made up of a 15-car field, and the track was apparently a half-mile paved oval. With a name like Air Base Speedway, it's reasonable to assume that the track was at or near Donaldson Air Force Base, which closed down and just became Donaldson Center Airport after World War II in the 1960s. Now, a paved short track would have been pretty darn special in 1951. Pretty much the entire schedule, save for the Darlington race, was on dirt. So I, like many others, assumed that they had made a temporary track on the runways of the Air Base, but that got called into question too. Also, I seriously doubt that the Air Force would have let NASCAR hold a race on an active air base. That's just total lunacy. I followed the conversation in the comments on this track's page at Racing Reference, and someone said on Vocational Drive there is evidence of a dirt track on Google Street View, but didn't give an exact location. This guy got pretty upset about that, and then a breakthrough. My man here says he's found the exact address and even a picture of the track. It gives the exact location just south of 1507 Antioch Church Road at the entrance of what is now Sunland Distribution Incorporated. He says you can't find it on Google Earth or historical aerials, so he used a federal map site, but to my ire, he never stated what that site was. Damn, foiled again. But he did post a link to racersreunion.com and some other folks who've been doing some sleuthing of their own about the Speedway. Sadly, this too just leads to more questions. Apparently, there's some discussion about whether or not this was actually Greenville Pickens Speedway or the alleged Air Base Speedway. Considering that Racing Reference has the track listed as a paved surface, though, it would have to be some track other than Greenville Pickens Speedway since that track wasn't paved until 1970. The next post confirms that Air Base Speedway was in fact its own entity and brings forth cold hard evidence, newspaper clippings and touts the NASCAR Grand National Circuit coming to town, but wait, last night? This place had lights? There was a paved half-mile oval with lights in 1951, and that track just straight up disappeared? With no recollection from locals or any evidence of its existence whatsoever? How? That track must have cost tens of thousands of dollars to build in 1950s money. How did it just slip away into obscurity? Where did it go? I don't think I can stress enough how big of a deal this was in 1951. Back then, your track would be considered a little bit hoity-toity if it had a concrete wall all the way around. Most of the time back in the day, they just put up some wooden fence post or some cheap guard railing and just hoped for the best. The next newspaper clipping confirms that yes, this race will be run at night, specifically at 9pm. But hold on again, between 60 and 65 cars? Why were only 15 listed on Racing Reference then? Well, apparently they only let the top 15 qualifiers compete in the main event. That seems like a really light field for a 200 lap main event on a half mile track if you ask me. But Racing Reference confirms it, so we'll just have to roll with that for now. Jesse Taylor won the pole for this event and is credited by Racing Reference with an 8th place finish, sporting the number 31. The rest of the field are the type of guys you'd expect. All the flocks are here, Buck Baker, Lee Petty, Dick Rathman, awesome name by the way, Curtis Turner, etc, etc. But the next post by Mr. TMC Chase contains quite the twist. According to these articles, they made clear in no uncertain terms that the track was indeed dirt and not paved. They talk about there being almost no dust and even double down on the race being held at night. 
Wait a second, a night race in November? Well, that doesn't sound too smart to me. It must have been cold as hell out. But what else were you supposed to do on a Saturday night in the 1950s? Stay at home and watch YouTube videos? I don't think so. Also, apparently the year before the 1951 race, Airbase Speedway was known as Greenville Textile Speedway, or just Textile Speedway. The textile industry had been the backbone of the local economy for nearly a century at that point, so it made sense to name the Speedway after it. But I guess it sounded too much like Greenville Pickens Speedway, so they gave it a little bit of panache with the name change. These articles were apparently found by searching for the promoter's name, Charlie Hicks, but I couldn't find anything more about who he was other than what was posted here. Apparently he was hoping to host a Grand National event even in 1950, and one year later he'd get his wish. He says he chemically treated the track to have there be less dust, but not no dust at all, which means people were breathing in that chemical agent, whatever it was. Maybe that's why the track got shut down. Can you say class action lawsuit? But hey, that's just baseless speculation on my part. And then finally the thread begins to wrap up with the last two posts by our main sleuth, Aldo Kanzian. And he mentions an article titled NASCAR's Forgotten Race in the January 2015 issue of Speed Sport Magazine on page 12. No way to confirm that unless somebody just so happens to have that issue laying around somewhere. So we're just gonna have to let sleeping dogs lie on that one. And then the big break in the case. Pictures thanks to USGS.gov. He confirms the exact address and then post some dead links of the track via postimg.org. This post is three years old and postimg went belly up two years ago. The names of the photos are still active though. Place of Airbase Speedway.jpg, Airbase Speedway.jpg, and Airbase Speedway Nowadays.jpg. I go on the Wayback Machine and send it through and nothing. It never got archived. Whatever, we have the address. We know these roads. This is in our backyard. Let's do this. Google Earth Pro for desktop only goes back to 1994 for this area, so we'll have to use Earth Explorer at USGS.gov. I mark the spot out in the criteria, go back in time, and nothing. This image is as close as I've gotten. An aerial single frame taken in January of 1951, just seven months shy of the big race. Airbase Speedway should be about here, just south of Donaldson Air Force Base, but hold on. This isn't Donaldson Air Force Base. Donaldson Air Base looks like this. Hold on a second. Huh, the image they took wasn't already pointed north-south, so that means we should be able to see it. It should be right about there. We did it. We tracked her down. Air Base Speedway, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is in black and white, but that definitely looks like a dirt surface to me compared to Antioch Church Road right next to it. I think I can make out some grandstands up here to what I assume is turn one, and they're positioned further down the straightaway so that they can be used for the quarter mile infield track as well. This article claims that 6,000 people were on hand for one event, and I find it hard to believe that they jammed that many people into grandstands this small. So I guess they must have just let people park around the track. Over here is what looks like a parking lot, and that's about all there is to report on. No apparent concessions, bathrooms, tech shed, ticket booth, or really any structures for that matter. Save for what looks like a wall around the track judging by the shadows, and billboards maybe in turns one and two? These over here are houses for military housing on the base just for some sense of scale. But let's go off on a tangent for a second. Someone deadass built a half mile dirt oval, put in some stadium lights, chemically treated the dirt so that it would produce less dust, and apparently gave it an entire wraparound wall, but didn't put in basic first world amenities like bathrooms and concessions. I've changed my mind. I think that's why this track went belly up. They put all their money in the wrong spots, which is to be expected to be quite honest, and even forgiven to a large extent. I mean, racetracks were a new endeavor for everyone at the time. It wasn't like there was a long history of the do's and don'ts of track construction and operation at the time. You couldn't just go look this up at the local library. So all these track promoters did this by sheer trial and error. And it looks like Airbase Speedway might have just been one of those errors. I did manage to get one other photo thanks to a guy by the name of Drive Through on the Outlap podcast. And this photo has the roads leading to the track highlighted. Unfortunately, there isn't any greater detail on the facility itself. But why did Airbase Speedway go bust? And when? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anything, but I did do some fidgeting around with Earth Explorer and I got this final photo, a ridiculously high resolution single frame taken in 1964 in September. And I don't know about you, but this track looks thoroughly abandoned to me. There's no evidence of grandstands anymore, the parking lot looks like it's still kind of there, but the walls are hard to see, the track itself looks overgrown, and where I think the grandstands used to be, there's just a big tree now growing unchecked. Safe to say the only people racing around here at this time are the locals just for shots and goggles. Not to mention whatever held the lighting in place for night races has since been torn down too. 
That still doesn't explain why though, and that's where the trail runs completely cold. Here we had a dirt track with very few amenities, if any at all, but did perplexingly draw in decent crowds for the time. It hosted a big league NASCAR race and even had enough money behind it to hold night races. What kind of mad lad builds a racetrack with lights and grandstands but nothing else? Whatever was going through Charlie Hicks's head, it doesn't appear that he or anybody else wrote it down. Airbase Speedway's lifespan was short, I don't even think it held races for more than a decade before it shut its doors. It was kind of out in the middle of nowhere being next to the tiny towns of Gant and Conesty, but that shouldn't have been a determining factor in its demise. Plenty of great racetracks are out in the sticks out in the middle of nowhere and still draw crowds to this day. Racetracks are truly a living embodiment of the phrase, if you build it then they will come, but I guess just not enough people came to this track. For whatever reason, it went off into that long good night, and when it passed, it seems nobody even bothered to document the occasion. Airbase Speedway came and went without so much as a murmur from the world around it being uttered. But it mattered. Of the nearly 2,600 Cup Series races held to date, it played host to at least one of those. It played a note in this great big symphony we call NASCAR, and I think it deserves to be remembered. It was right here in my backyard. I can drive to that spot right now in less than 20 minutes and I never even knew it existed until late one night on a racing reference kick. I clicked on this one Speedway's name that I'd never heard of before and learned more than I would have ever thought. I had to work for it though, and I'm still not done yet. I want more. So put the word out. Slap's putting up a bounty. If anybody can get me both a picture of the outside of the Speedway from ground level and an action shot of some actual racing going on down on the track itself, I'll send you a copy of NASCAR Heat 4 signed by me or just 60 bucks whichever you prefer. However, both of these things have to be presented as part of a package deal. If you give me one but not the other, then no deal for you. That's my criteria. And I really hope you guys come through for me on this. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little deep dive into the things that keep me up at night and can appreciate the obscurity of this little track out in upstate South Carolina. So until next time, y'all take it easy and happy hunting. If you have the photos and want to claim the prize, hit me up on Twitter. My DMs are always open.